Okay, we are underway with Jack Besh from LSU, moved from tight end to wide receiver. If you have any questions, Jack is ready for you. We'll go right here, second row. Hi, Jake. Uh, I just wanted to, Tyler Sharp from KBTX and College Station, I just wanted to ask about Brian Kelly, how the team is adjusting, and you know, just how he fits here in, in his first year at LSU. Yeah, Coach Kelly, uh, he's been awesome. I don't think there was a better fit um, for our program Second row on the left, please. Hey, Jack, Jacques Doucet, WAFE TV in Baton Rouge. Um, with NIL and some other things going on, sometimes people say, do, do college players dream of playing college football as much as they used to? You seem to strike me as a guy who's always dreamed of playing for LSU. Can you speak to that? And then also, it seems like some of these guys who were in the freshman class, Emory Jones, Will Campbell, they, they share that dream with you. Uh, definitely. Being from the state of Louisiana, uh, growing up an LSU fan, Saturdays were always devoted in the fall for watching LSU, whether that be in Baton Rouge or back in Lafayette, where I'm from. So, and always going up, you go look at pictures of me as a kid, I'm probably going to have one LSU shirt. And it goes the same way, like Emory, Walker, Will, uh, Mason Smith, just all those homegrown kids. It just means a little bit more whenever you're playing, you know, for LSU, being from Louisiana. Um, you know, you want to put on for your state, you want to put on for your family, your friends, and different things like that. Uh, so it's been just awesome, you know, being able to play uh, here at LSU. To your right, second row. Hey, um, were you surprised at all with Max Johnson, um, you know, transferring, and just with your experience playing with them, just how do you feel like he is going to adjust and, and you know, play at a and in his new role? Yeah, um, you know, Max was a very talented quarterback at LSU. Um, he obviously left to go to Texas A&M. Um, we haven't spoken much, not because of ill will or anything like that, just because, um, you know, we've been doing our own thing. Um, but, no, I think Max is going to do great. You know, we wish him the best of luck and, you know, hope everything goes well with him. Uh, fourth row. Hey, Jack. Uh, Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Seems like a common thread around a lot of SEC programs this year is there's a veteran quarterback from the transfer portal, newly arrived on campus, competing for the job. You have one of those at LSU in Jaden Daniels. Can you tell us about your impressions of Jaden and sort of where he uh, shapes up in the quarterback battle to be uh, your quarterback this fall? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Jaden obviously played a couple years at Arizona State. Uh, absolute baller. Uh, definitely more of like a dual threat style QB. Um, you know, he has wheels. He had over like 20, 21 miles per hour during one of our spring practices. So definitely whenever that pocket collapses, like he's going to be able to get out, run the ball, throw the ball, uh, do whatever's needed, you know, for, for him to be able to make the play work. Um, but at the same time with the QB battle, uh, us as players, we're going to control what we can control. Um, and it's just going to come down to obviously fall camp is going to be huge for the quarterback battle. But also the style of play that, you know, Coach Dembrock, Coach Kelly, and Coach Sloan want. Um, and like I said at the end, it's going to be their decision on, on who gets the job. But I'm just as excited as anybody else to, to see who gets the job day one. We'll stay on the left third row. Uh, Beth Wool, WHNS in Greenville, uh, South Carolina. Um, the NIL situation, has that changed the dynamic at all in the locker room? I mean, I'm sure you guys are aware of who's getting what. Um, how was that handled in the locker room and in the camaraderie situation? Um, actually, for us in our locker room, they're like, we don't really talk about NIL much. Um, obviously, like you see posts and you see different things like that, but rarely, really, I've never heard it. Um, does anybody really get to talking about like money or the different things they get from it? Uh, we're all brothers, and even if you do have a guy that's making a little bit more money than the other person, uh, he's always going to take care of his brother, the right or left of him. Um, so that really hasn't been a problem at all, you know. And we're all for our guys that are making the money; uh, they deserve it, and we're happy for them. But at the same time, we don't really talk much about it, and that's definitely not something that like gets in our way. In the middle of four rows back. Chesson Boucher with WVLA in Baton Rouge. Jack, you were there for Coach O 
last season, this year, you have Brian Kelly, who is, people consider him more of a CEO. Have you seen kind of the transition from that? Yeah, uh, first I just want to say, without Coach O, uh, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to play here at LSU, so definitely, like, all my thanks to him. But yeah, Coach Kelly, uh, he does everything very specifically. He's, like, he's moving chess pieces. Um, everything he does, he does it for a purpose, um, and he knows that once he does one thing, he know what the outcome is going to lead to. So yeah, definitely very strategic in everything he does. Um, just like the staff he put together, like there wasn't one coach he just got to fill the spot. It was a very like strategic move, and he knew what he wanted and what he was going to get out of those coaches once they got here. Fifth row on the left. Hey Jack, Dan Peck again from ESPN 1067. Uh, what else can you what can you tell us about the receivers room at, at LSU this year? I know uh, Keyshawn deciding to stay is a uh, is, is is huge for you guys, and uh, it's it's a uh, it's a team that is usually talented at that position. Uh, what, what can you tell us about uh, your your position mates at wide receiver this year? Yeah, our wide receiver room is stacked, and we're headed by one of the best uh, wide receiver coaches in college football, with that being Coach Hankton and uh, Coach Carter. Yeah, our wide receiver room, you know, you could put on a blindfold, put all the names in the hat, pick a name out the hat, and, you know, that's in the, that person is destined to go off. There's nobody in that room that's even close to being just average. Everybody in that room is a very good football player, a very good athlete, uh, route runner, uh, and then on the mental side, knowing the defenses and everything like that. But what I think is going to elevate us, is, like I said, is our coaches. Um, Coach Hank, he's taught us so much about on the field uh, things, obviously, but also about just off the field stuff, just how to be a man and how to take accountability for all the decisions you make, even if it might not be a good one, um, you know, just to take accountability for it and to learn from your mistakes. Right here in the middle, fourth row again. You brought up Coach Hankton. I know it's only been a few months with him, but aside from the off the field stuff, kind of what have you learned from him so far? Yeah, kind of like what I just said, just kind of how to be a man and to take accountability for every choice you make, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, not only that, but to also just always be like kind to people. You know, some people are going through stuff that you don't know about, and you know, you might not think that even of them. So just always be nice to people. And, and one of the things we did whenever we first got in there, we like kind of stated our why and why we do different things, um, if that be a struggle or if that just be because you want to be great at football or whether it would be so you kind of got to like deep dive and learn about everybody in the room because everybody had to do it so it kind of just lets you know more about your teammates and the people around you uh to know like if they need that help or if they need that call that you'll always be there for in the middle third row again uh, jack you stepped in obviously as a freshman and made an immediate impact you caught a touchdown at alabama you didn't you weren't wide-eyed about anything but what's the biggest takeaway from year one what do i need to improve upon what did you learn playing in the sec into year two um 360 rotation. You know, I want to get bigger, stronger, faster, because in the SEC, if you don't elevate and transform like that, then, you know, then you're, you're behind par. Uh, everybody in the SEC, uh, week in, week out, is very good team, very good cornerbacks, and they're going to be NFL guys. So, you know, you're always going against kids, or not kids, against men that you're going to see now, and if you make it to the league, that you're going to see in the league. So, you know, you always have to be on top of your game. You always have to be elevating. Um, whether that be in season, off season, you always have to be watching what you do and, and getting better at it. Um, because if not, like I said, you're just going to be behind. So you always have to stay on top of the ball and on top of your game. Final two questions first. Yeah, Rob Brown, sidelines.live and sports radio in Memphis. How relieved are you to get to actually play a damn football game and quit talking about the portal in NIL, especially playing a name like Florida State in the Superdome? Because we've got an LSU Tiger for life. Frank Duffy on with us a lot, talks about, man, there's nothing like opening weekend, especially against a big name opponent. Yeah, and especially in New Orleans, uh, the city of New Orleans is going to be on fire. I mean, we're going to have as many fans inside the stadium as we are going to be outside. Um, no, especially a big venue like that, um, it's, it's going to be awesome. I'm very excited to pad up again and to start playing some more games and, you know, to see how all the hard work we've put in this offseason to see it transform and come into our gameplay. Final question here in the middle again. I have to ask you, Jack, most of the times at SEC Media Days, it's juniors or seniors, guys that get to represent the university. You're here as a sophomore. What did it mean to you when you found out? Yeah, uh, everything. You know, just the honor to be able to come do something like this, to 
uh, not only to represent my family, but to represent my friends in the university uh, and the state of Louisiana and all the great people we have there. Uh, just truly an honor and a blessing. And uh, obviously, you know, I'm a Catholic, so, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. You know, without God, you know, I can't really do anything, but with him, I can do all things. So definitely just very honored and blessed to be able to partake in this event. Thank you, Jack. Good luck this year. Thank you.